Hi all, this is part one of a four-part series on designing this custom engagement ring in SOLIDWORKS. So let's get started. I'm going to open a fresh part file here. And we're going to build this in metrics. So come down to the bottom right and change it to the metric system. We're going to start pretty simply here by just doing a simple extruded ring shank. I'm going to have the center of the ring right on the origin and it's going to be a size uh, four and a half, which is 15.3 millimeters. I'm going to use the offset entities tool to create a 1.8 millimeter thick shank. Let's extrude that 2.25 millimeters on the mid plane. So it's going to go both directions. And let's soften the outside edge of that a little bit here. Let's do a half a millimeter. Now I want to design the setting around a center gemstone, uh, which is going to be a one carat diamond. So let's import a diamond file here. If you go, come up to insert, part, and I have a gemstone library here. It's a one carat round diamond. And we want to move this diamond into place using the move bodies tool. And we can do that by starting with a sketch. Let's sketch on the front plane. And what I want to do is ensure that the culet of this stone, this sharp point, is comfortably away from uh, my client's finger. So I'm going to set a dimension up here that I'm going to move this culet up to about half a millimeter from the inside diameter of the ring. So let's move this gemstone up. We're going to go to Insert, Features, Move Copy. Select the body we want to move, and we're going to just translate this stone from the point we drew on the culet up to that point a half a millimeter above the wearer's finger. And let's hide our sketch. Okay, I'm going to wrap up part one of this series by drawing the seat of this stone using the revolve tool. So let's hide our shank. We're going to create our sketch for our revolve on the front plane. So I'm going to draw a quick cross section of the seat for this stone. I'll draw my center line first, that's what we're going to revolve around. And this stone, these bottom facets are going to sit on an angled seat like this. And we're going to draw our vertical line away from the center line because we're going to keep a hole going through the seat so that it lets uh, light shine through to brighten up this stone. Just give it some quick dimensions. Have kind of an angled look on the outside. Okay, looks like we have a fully dimensioned sketch there. We're going to use this sketch to do two things. We're going to revolve a boss to create the actual seat, and then we can use the exact same sketch to do a revolved cut to cut through the shank. So let's come up here to our top left and find the revolved boss tool, and all we do is select the center line of our sketch. And you'll see it gives you a preview. Look down here, we want to make sure we unselect the merge result. We don't want the setting to merge onto the stone. Now we're going to use the exact same sketch to do a revolved cut through the shank. So keep this in mind in the future, you can use the same sketch for multiple features. So let's unhide our shank. I'm going to hide the gemstone and the seat just come back down to your history tree and select that same sketch and now we're going to do a revolved cut and we want to make sure we're only going to cut through the shank so we'll come down to your feature scope under selected bodies deselect auto select and select your shank so it's going to give me a little pop-up here because there was a hole in our setting basically it's cutting a channel through there instead we don't want to keep that center part we just want to keep the outer part of the shank so Let's do selected bodies, and we'll just do body one is what we want to keep. So. 
So that concludes part one of the series. Uh, look forward to part two. We're going to get a little more complicated by introducing the loft tool for creating the prongs for this stone.